we are in a baroque castle is your work baroque in this baroque castle i think my work is baroque because it's not pretending that you don't understand it so the baroque is great because i mean in one way it's trying to seduce you but it's not saying that it's not trying to seduce you so it's very honest somehow baroque is you know transparent in that way that it's not pretending to not wanting to seduce you so you could say that it has a deconstructive element and my work is a little bit like that too if you walk behind the waterfall you can see it's actually a crane so i think there's something baroque to that it's not an illusion it's constructed it is real but it is a constructed reality just like all realities so i think we live at baroque times except sometimes people make the mistake they pretend that they are real beyond our engagement mm. we can't do anything about them so in that way i hope to suggest that my work is also you know baroque in this idea of inclusion that if you engage the work can actually change and your perception of the work can change which means essentially reality itself is a construction and that can change too should you bother to engage but of course if you don't engage if you just consume passively the world the world is less likely to change and you want the world to change well i want people to understand that living in a democracy like we do offers us the opportunity to actually have impact on the world it might not be as much as we want and it might also be a little slower than we want but generally speaking i do think that we are in a situation where we can choose how to walk through the park at versailles we don't have to walk in the footsteps of the king right so people maybe underestimate the importance of actually making your own route choose your own path you might actually enjoy seeing things from the back you might also choose to focus on how this spectacle is constructed and doing so i think you also can evaluate how your own gaze how your own way of seeing the world is also a construction you don't see things in an in a sort of objective or real way you i would say you you your way of seeing things is also a construction your senses are a result of your upbringing your culture your societies and so on but you are whisper whispering your message you're not loud in but, telling your message well i think these types of messages these these types of narratives should be gradually discovered by people themselves i'm in no position to sort of talk like a king in a patronizing top down type of way i think exercising trust to the people is also about showing them that well they will eventually find out how to deal with their own lives themselves i'm not here to tell anybody how to do things i'm here to offer a proposal which is about well doing is actually a little more complex than what than what we think and um, reality is also a little more complex than we think it can actually change it's not objective it's not you know truth is not just truth we have values but also the values which are fundamental to us but also the values they change as time moves on so the values reflect our society and but sometimes societies evolve faster than the values and you have a discrepancy between how we think and what the world is doing right so then we need to sort of bridge that gap between our values and what is going on in the real world and that's kind of a you say that's a sort of readjustment i think the cultural sector in which art lives such works they would like the ones i do for instance are about bridging that gaps between what we think about reality and what is actually reality and that's what i mean it when i say it's a it's a kind of deconstructive idea of the baroque but baroque normally is an idea of parallelism to no and it was obvious in vienna but there's no not much idea of parallelism here well i don't know i think my fountain is you know a parallel fountain to all the other fountains there's a number of scientific ideas behind it there's a number of you know engineering challenges behind it it's not on all the time it's corresponding with the park the architecture and yet it also offers something which is normally not here because when you're standing at the castle
the perspective of the garden has been organized to create the illusion of more depth than what is actually here. Mm. It is infinitely big. That's how the garden was laid out, to be sort of playing with your senses in a very seductive and also a little bit manipulating way. So the waterfall, you can't really, when you put it here, tell how big it is. Yeah, right? exactly. So you are going to give me the exact size they don't want to give me. Yes, so exciting. I will give you the exact answer on the size matter. But the point is, when water falls, it tells us the distance from the top to the base. And you can tell, standing a bit back, if it falls very fast, boom, like this, it's a smaller waterfall close by. If it falls very slow, it's a bigger waterfall further away. So if you look at the waterfall, it will tell you itself how high it is. And then I've chosen on this occasion not to tell how high it is because I don't, it's not actually really a secret. And you know, if people really want to find out, it's, a, it's not so difficult also. But essentially, we live in a world where the quantifiable always wins over the non-quantifiable, where feelings and emotionals and, and you know, psychology is struggling to not be marginalized by the numbers, by the due diligence, by the McKinsey-driven world in which we live. So for me, it's incredibly important to just suggest, well, even if you don't know the height exactly, you will be okay. The experience won't benefit from you knowing the height of the waterfall. But me, I'm a journalist, so to give the message and to try people to come, if I said it's very big, it's not enough. If I say it's 40 meters, I do my job. But I think cultural journalism has sacrificed its true potential on the, on the sort of uh, table of quantifiables, such as numbers, prices. You have to see in the papers like the one you write in, there is more press given to auction results, success stories from the art uh, fairs. There is more about the kind of mesh, the sort of quantifiable nature of culture, which is very sad because culture is really about identity, who we are, how we feel, do we feel comfortable being who we are, all the questions that art has been about throughout history. So why would the cultural press today suddenly cave into the financial section in the paper and only write about numbers? So I, I have I, two columns, one about numbers, one about you. 